Hello, this is Eric of Knopaus, and welcome to part two of why your computer might not boot up. There are several different reasons, which I mentioned in part one, but there's also yet a few more reasons. In part one, I mentioned the power switch. So the power switch connector, but of course the more common issue is the actual switch right here can actually fail. And I actually had it to happen to my own computer before. And what happens is the computer does nothing. You press the button, nothing actually happens. So that could be a sign of a dead power switch, which can be replaced. Something that could be less obvious is say a bent pin, a failed pin on the motherboard itself to the CPU. Basically, a failed CPU. What will often happen is the fans will ramp up to full speed and the system will do absolutely nothing. That's actually hard to test unless you have an extra CPU laying around. Or sometimes you could actually be inserting an incompatible CPU. Maybe they, someone said, well, it works with the CPU, but then you need a BIOS update for it to work. For example, if I wanted to, the B550 motherboard from AMD, well, it doesn't work. It works with 3000 series, but it doesn't work with a 3200 or 3400G. That's a 3000 series, right? Wrong. That's actually a 2000 series. They label to a 3000 series. And Intel, their naming scheme is a disaster itself. For instance, you buy an Intel processor, one with an F at the end of it suffix, it means it has no graphics built in. And the only way your system will run is if you put a GPU in the system, because there are no graphics, you'll have nothing but a blank screen. If your cooler gets kicked with dust, be it your CPU cooler, your graphics card, or even your power supply, which supplies power to your entire computer, it'll overheat. And of course, what components you should do to protect itself, they shut down. So make sure you do regular maintenance, and this is something that a lot of people don't consider. You may have had a computer sitting around for three years and all of a sudden it just keeps on shutting itself off. Well, it might be time for a spring cleanup of that computer case. Fans. If your CPU fan or power supply fan fails, again, this will cause an overheating situation and therefore result in needing a replacement for your fan because your computer, well, it'll fail. A failed liquid cooler, all in one cooler, is likely to cause a crash almost right away, making it seem like your computer's failing, but it's failing because of an overheat situation. It just takes the pump to go, and instantly, with at least within minutes, your computer will be dead, or within, well, even a couple of seconds. It's not that it's completely dead, it's just that you need a new cooler in order to actually have a functional computer. Liquid coolers are not simple as replacing a fan. If the pump goes, it's basically you need a new one. So one situation that's actually quite simple to happen, that's not such a big deal, at least once you know what's going on, is your monitor might be set to the wrong display type. For instance, it could actually be set to display on display port and you have HDMI connected or vice versa. Another situation could be an incompatible cable. In the case of simply the wrong port set, you just have to go into the menu of the monitor, set the correct one, and that will solve that or try simply a different cable if you have one accessible to see if that cable you're using actually the connection itself failed or just simply switch from HDMI to DisplayPort and vice versa and hopefully that will solve the problem or you can have a situation of you're connecting to the built-in uh, graphics port on the motherboard itself but you have a GPU and not connecting to the right port itself. Once you connect to the right one on your case that might be the solution to your problems itself. When you have a laptop, one thing that could possibly happen is the display cable within it actually broke or came disconnected from the screen. Well, maybe you're one of those people that like to tweak your computer, but if you had a tweak your computer in a way that your BIOS didn't like, your BIOS will actually stop your computer from booting up altogether. You'll have to actually take the battery out and reset it. Of course, something that can also happen, much more detrimental that can actually destroy the computer from working completely, is you updated the BIOS, the power flicked off, now you have a failed motherboard flash. 
we better hope you have a BIOS flashback option, because if you don't, well, your computer might be completely dead and unusable, and you may have to buy a new board altogether. The other problem it could be is you updated the firmware for your graphics card, and if that fails to flash, you're gonna either have a bri uh, bricked graphics card, or hopefully there's a way to restore that. You'll have to go to the manufacturer or find some other solution. One thing that's not obvious to many people is you could have a really small computer that actually uses a riser cable. So it means that the graphics card, it, rather than being inserted in the slot, there's a cable that actually runs along the system and connects it separately from the regular slot to actually make your computer smaller. However, depending on the motherboard and your graphics card, the riser cable actually might be the culprit causing you an issue where your computer screen is blank. It seems like the computer's running properly, the fans turned down everything else, so it's like, what's happening? Well, incompatible riser cable, which means you may have to upgrade to, say, a newer cable that's actually compatible with the standard you have, or simply connect the graphics card directly to the slot and see if it works, and it's just that cable that's a problem or not. Of course, one situation you can actually borrow or use an old graphics card, go into the motherboard and change the setting, just like I'm going to show you now. So to access the BIOS, normally when you press the power button, you're going to be pressing the delete key on your keyboard, or in some cases, F1. Keep in mind that your PCI Express version you'll have to change, so when it gets to 5.0, 6.0, and your PCI Express riser cable is 3 or 4, you'll have to change it respectively to maintain compatibility with the cable itself. This is actually a BIOS menu on MSI. So to get where we want to go to change the PCI Express mode on this particular motherboard, I have to change from easy mode, which normally would be this screen, to advanced mode. And I'll be going to the settings, the advanced settings, and be looking up for PCI. In this case, it's PCI subsystem settings and going to PCIe generation switch, gen switch. So normally it actually will be on auto or it might even say gen 4, but you'll want to select gen 3 to actually make sure you have the right generation of PCI Express if your cable for a riser cable is a problem. Not all computers have it, just mostly smaller computers. And of course you'll want to save your settings and exit. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, List in detail what your system is, graphics card and everything else. And of course, that'll help me sort out what the problem could be. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and Hardware. You might wonder, how do I get this list together from part one and this part two? Well, fact is I build computers consistently I built my sister's computer, my parents' computer, my best friend's computer, my last landlord's computer, my last landlord's daughter's computer. I have people that have built computers from Alberta, and I'm in BC, still contacting me to this very day because I build dependable computer systems. So this is what I do as a hobby, and of course, I'm consistently upgrading my computer and trying different components. So that is where I actually figured this list from.